Hey friends, Joe the Farmer here, and we've got to talk about the tractor. So, um, I want to be completely honest on my channel. It's crazy because you make a video and you talk about how, you know, you love a tractor and everything else and blah, blah, blah. And then you get it, you put 16 hours on it, 16, and then the computer module goes out. That's the bad news. The good news is, is that my dealer was great to work with. They came and picked the tractor up. They put a new computer module in there, a computer or ECM, whatever the thing's called. No cost, no drama. Didn't charge me to pick it up, drop it back off. They had it for about two weeks. Uh, this whole, you know, pandemic thing has made things go a lot slower when it comes to getting parts. I understand it's a South Korean tractor. You know, there, there's a lot of different places in the country and in the world that are being affected by this. Kudos to Coyote for making it right, for fixing it. Uh, I've put no time on it, so I think it's right. Uh, there are a couple small things that kind of irked me a little bit about it. One is that they put a bunch of hours on it, which I don't know why you'd need to put seven hours on the tractor while you had it for two weeks. Um, I'll take that up with them. The second is they were supposed to put a mirror in, which they did not do. Again, everyone's shorthanded right now. They're probably really busy. I get it, but you know, get it right. And the third thing is that uh, one of the hydraulic lines is all scarred up again, which it was not that way. I replaced it right before they picked it up. So it's another thing I need to talk to them about. But uh, I have about 24 hours in the machine now. They're gonna take it back at 50, 55 hours, something like that, and then we'll do the first oil change, first hydraulic fluid uh, filter changes, and I'll, I'll take it up with them at that point. So anyway, we're gonna get some work done today. We're gonna get on this puppy and we are going to uh, cut the trails because they're getting overgrown because I haven't had it for a while. So I know a lot of people like the Ventrac. It's an amazing tool. It's a fantastic uh, bush hog. It's really nimble. How do I explain this? So with the Ventrac, it's a great machine for uh, a smaller acreage. I'm gonna be going probably half a mile to a mile away. Um, you're driving through big thick stuff. You really wanna make sure that you have a bush hog for this because I want the cab. I want the comfort and you know the Ventrac is it's really slow I mean the max speed is like five miles per hour so it would take me forever to do it so th this is one of the situations where the tractor is gonna be a lot more effective than the Ventrac I also want to get some hours on it and you know make sure everything's right with it and my driveway is completely jacked up so I'm gonna have to go ahead and uh, scrape the driveway we're gonna push hog some trails that are overgrown we're gonna get that stuff taken care of and then uh, put a little bit more corn out. We're getting some great pictures. Uh, cannot wait to do some of these uh, final reviews on a few of the cameras that we have out there. I'm gonna get that done this weekend. I appreciate y'all for watching these videos. Uh, if you will, hit that little like button. Uh, I really appreciate all the comments that we've had recently. It's been awesome. Um, you know, getting to know everyone, getting to meet people and just, you know, talking back and forth. That's why I started this channel. So please keep that coming. It's fun to talk and uh, let's get on to fun stuff. We're gonna get this boy to work. All right, so I got the tractor and put the box blade on the tractor. And, uh, you know, this seems to be what happens whenever we have a really solid rain, which is great because we planted the food plots. We got all that stuff in, the seed was in. Um, perfect timing to do that, especially for the summer. But, you know, when we have a lot of big rains, the driveway just gets completely rutted out. You know, it's just an idea of how deep that is. You know, it's probably at least six or at least a six or eight inch uh, divot in there. So anyway, I'm gonna get this cleaned up. Sorry about the wind noise, but the weather, it doesn't care if I've got work to do or not. I've realized that. But yeah, let's get this thing uh, smoothed out and then we can get to bush hogging. Yeah, sorry about the noise, but uh, one of the reasons why I had to go with a 73 horsepower tractor is because jobs like this, our driveway is a half a mile long and you know this gravel is really compact and if I had a much smaller little tractor or something like that, I, there's no way I could have done something like this uh, without hiccuping and every time a tractor kind of hiccups, if you don't have enough power, it kind of leaves a mount. So you really want to have the smoothest ride that you possibly can with a box plate on the back and uh, this thing, I, full disclosure, this is the first time I've done this with this tractor and it's a lot different. Uh, I'm used to the DK5010 where I'm kind of out and open and I can hear everything. So I definitely, you know, there's a spatial difference with a cab versus not having a cab, which I can open the back window and it's fine. But, um, you know, this has to be a Swiss Army knife here in the farm because if not, you know, there's no there's no place for a unitasker on the farm. Uh, this is pretty heavy duty ground engagement. And when that box blade gets full of gravel, it's a six foot box blade. You know, it, it, Lord knows how much that thing weighs. I have no, I'm not even gonna guess, well over a thousand pounds. The box blade itself weighs about six to 800 pounds. So uh, 
uh, you really want to have enough power to do a job like this. But so far, so good. This thing's it's rocking and rolling. Got some tunes going. The air conditioning's going. 23 hours. It's doing a great job. That DK5010 did a good job too, but it didn't have the capabilities that this one does with all the different hydraulics. And once you start getting like a grapple on there, the hydraulic top link, the bush hog, you know, you re every everything that you add starts to take power from the machine. And, you know, not to mention when, you know, when we're here in hill country, you can see how hilly it is. You know, this thing going up and down a hill is, I mean, it takes a lot of weight to pull itself up the hill. One thing I have not tested out yet, though, is the rear. There we go. That works. You know what's funny is with the old tractor, I didn't have to make those doors as wide as I do now. This new tractor is huge, but it's awesome. The quick hitch is probably, let me come closer. The quick hitch is probably one of the best innovations in tractor, uh, innovations ever. So this thing, as you just saw, all I have to do is just back up. By having a hydraulic top link, I can adjust what direction this thing goes. You probably saw, I just lifted it out, picked it up, pulled it in, and here we are all set. So now all I need to do is always make sure the tractor is turned off before I ever touch the PTO every time. No matter what, I always turn the tractor off. I'll never touch the PTO with it on. Uh, I like my arms and my hands too much. And all we do, this is a plate that actually is a guard, but since the tractor's still so new, it's kind of having a hard time moving. Easy fix. And this little button right here, when you push this uh, shaft on there, you just push this button and it will um, seat on there and then you let go and it's, and it's on there for good. So and that's it. So I've already done plenty of greasing on this thing. I've greased the flywheel, I've greased everything on it. So I don't need to do any of that right now. All I really need to do right now, which is amazing, is just get to work. That's why sometimes it really helps to get a lot of that greasing and stuff done when you have some downtime. Yeah, we're pretty lined up. Except before, you know, you want to be lined up with your drawbar. This is your drawbar down there at the bottom. And it's almost like the little trailer hitch looking thing. But, cool. There's one thing I need to do before we set sail. And this is way overdue. Well, so I'm going to pull the tractor out. I'm going to shut all the doors and I'm going to hit it with this hot shot fogger. Um, this is not a sponsored post. Again, I, I don't have I'm too small to be sponsored by anything other than, I think, George, well, George from Buck Bourbon gave me a hat, so you the man, George. Um, but I'm going to fog this place because that will keep the bugs down and keep the spiders down, and, you know, it's just part of being on agricultural property. If you want to be out in the country, if you want to have some space, if you want to spread out, and then have your neighbors half a mile away, you're going to deal with spiders and snakes and bugs. Did I tell you I found a snake in the barn? I'll put a picture in it here. Uh, this little fellow was just hanging in the barn and I actually kept him because he will keep down on the mouse population. Not poisonous, not harmful, and hopefully it's kind of like a barn cat.
You just don't have to feed it. I don't think I mentioned before too, this is a power shuttle. Check out how cool this is. So I need to make sure it's in gear, okay? So I'm just gonna go in one. Anytime I'm loading in the barn, I'm always in low and I'm in first gear. I go really slow because that keeps this, this tractor would rip the side of that wall off and that's not something I wanna deal with. So I'll just go a little bit slower right now. Uh, make sure the loader's up, in neutral, parking brake is off. Now check this out. Sorry, not that, I was just making sure there's nothing there. All you have to do with this tractor is put that thing forward and it goes. Now, if I wanted to stop, I go to neutral. My leg's not, I'm not touching anything. I can go backwards or I can stop or I can go forward. That is an amazing feature. It's really cool, especially if you're gonna be on this thing for a while. Um, you know, when you're on the field, if you're going, if you're in second gear and you wanna go in third gear, all I have to do is come down here, push this button, now in second gear. I didn't have to clutch, I didn't have to do anything. Um, pretty basic stuff. I mean, it, what do you think of next, right? I still hit the clutch though, just out of, totally out of habit. All right, let's go fog this puppy. So the trick with these hot shot foggers is that they need to be basically in the center of the room. So I keep this green bucket here, which I use for all kinds of stuff, but right now, it's going to be my hot shop bucket. Where the, there we go. So all you do, you definitely don't want to be in here. Shake it a little bit. Okay, there's a little critter right there. This little tab. Shake it a little bit. Walk away. It does all the work for you. I think later on, maybe today or tomorrow, I'm gonna to get the vent rack out and clear up all around the barn, all this stuff, all the trash, maybe clean up that tree line, clean up this, clean up closer to all these trees and that telephone pole. Vent rack. All right, let's do it. All right, so this is probably one of the last times I'll come out in this plot before the season. So here we are mid-September. Uh, the food plots are in. This is Whitetail Food Plots USA's rut time tubers and uh, beets and turnips, which have done a tremendous job. They always come up well. So last year I had the opportunity to shoot a beautiful buck. I'll put a picture of it in here. Uh, for Tennessee, it was a monster. And for me, you know, for me, I couldn't be happier. What these bucks will do is they'll hide back here in the tree line and then they'll just wait until they see a doe that they want and then they'll come out. Well, that's not exactly how you want to hunt them. Um, so what I've done is I've done this perimeter where you see the screening kind of going all the way back, even back there, the taller uh, grass, that's going to keep their vision from being able to see in here. So they're going to have to come around there and then get into the food plot and see if there's you know any doe or any, any reason to come in the food plot. Not really a whole lot coming up yet, but these things come fall, they'll be massive. Okay, so I'm the kind of guy that when I say something, I mean it. This stuff is the best product that I have found um, for deer. It, it works fantastic. It smells amazing. It is probably the best thing to get any kind of inventory of what you have. I keep saying this in the videos, but I mean it. And I wouldn't be out here in 105 degree weather, sweating and you know working as hard as I am using a product that stinks. So if you haven't checked it out, check out my video that says uh, how to track deer fast, buck bourbon. That's this product. It's a great video. It kind of gives you an idea of all the different products. Um, that is good stuff.
great news about the Buck Bourbon is that I think George is gonna come out with 25 pound bags. These are eight pound bags. I think they're eight pounds. Yeah, eight pound bags. And I need 25 pound bags. So George, owner of Buck Bourbon, George Cummings. George, go ahead and uh, let's get some 25 pound bags. That'd be great. Thanks. Well, friends, that was a fun day. We got a lot of work done. Um, we mowed a lot of trails back there and uh, we are ready for deer season, I believe. Uh, I still need to fertilize some of the food plots, but the hay is cut. Now it's really just a uh, matter of getting all windrowed and bailed and, um, you know, it's just so beautiful out here when the hay's down and it gives us a lot more space to kind of go out there, ride four wheelers and shoot and do all kinds of fun stuff, which I plan on doing this weekend with the kids. We're gonna have amazing weather. I think we're talking like low 70s, no humidity. So if you follow this channel, you know I don't like the heat. I don't like humidity. It's just, it's funny, man. The older you get, the more that stuff becomes, you know, it just bothers me more than it ever has. And uh, just part of it. But anyway, as you can see this beautiful sunset over these fields, that tells me it's time to go inside, time to start dinner, spend some time with the family and uh, time to end this video. But I really appreciate every one of you for watching. Uh, I think last I saw we've had like 9,000 views, which I didn't think we'd have nine views this entire year. So thank you all so much for watching these videos. And um, last I saw, I think we have 132 subscribers. And like, listen, it's not lost on me that you're spending your time watching what we're doing out here and uh, humbled. Like, I don't, I don't need a million subscribers. 132, if that's all we ever have, y'all are the bomb. I really appreciate y'all for watching these videos. And uh, as I always say, Hit that little like button. Leave me a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. It's the best part about a YouTube channel. But uh, I'm just going to take this in for a little bit. I'm Joe the Farmer. Appreciate y'all. We out.